Hey there, wanted to produce a detailed video going over the solution to question seven, the bonus question on homework three. Uh, many students tried it. Uh, some were very creative, some got close, some got closer still. Nobody got all the way there. And that's not surprising because it is a inherently difficult question because it, it really brings into sharp focus some of the shortcomings of SQL when it comes to this sort of thing, as well as some of the challenges of questions that are very reasonable for a decision maker to want to ask that um, you know come up from time to time. So let's talk about that. Well, first of all, let me mention one of the chief shortcomings of SQL that comes to light here is you can't do aggregations of aggregations. And this question, well, let's read it. Which vendor or vendors, because the top seller may be a tie between products sold by different vendors, sells the item that is ordered most often? So to rephrase that more simply, which vendor or vendors sells the item that is ordered most often? Um, so the reason that there are two aggregations that need to happen simultaneously is first you need to count, to count up the number of times each product has been sold, and then you need to find a maximum of that value. And if we could do something as simple as this, you know, if we could just say max count asterisk and nest our aggregations, uh, probably almost everybody could get the answer to this question, but we can't. And so we got to find a workaround. So, but before we jump into the workarounds, let's talk about, okay, so we need to know the count. The, well, first of all, there was some confusion about whether this is the item that is ordered in the largest quantity uh, versus the item that is ordered most often. What we want is the item that's ordered most frequently, not the item that is ordered in the largest quantity. Uh, although either approach is going to highlight the challenges here um, because you would need to provide a running sum of the total quantity ordered to get which one is ordered in the largest volumes. And so you're stuck either way. But let's say we want a count of the number of times that, that different products are ordered. Where are we going to find that? We're gonna find that in the order items table. So let's just take a look at the order items table first. Let's just select asterisk from order items. Whoops, a little typo there, my apologies. And whoop, there we go. So here are the order items. And so we can look at the product ID that uniquely identifies the product and just you know eyeball it because this is not a realistic amount of database of of data it's it's uh you know a sample table we can just eyeball it and see okay it looks like tnt2 has been ordered twice and it looks like fb has been ordered twice everything else anvil1 anvil2 jp2000 fc 001 sling and anvil3 have only been ordered once so just by eyeballing this table we now know the answer the answer is whoever sells the product FB and or TNT2, either that vendor or vendors are the answer. So, you know, using the amazing power of our human, human brains, uh, we're in pretty good shape and throw in a couple other lookups and we could do this manually. But if there are hundreds of millions of records or even thousands of records, we couldn't. And so we need to leverage the power of the machine to do this on behalf. Okay, so the next step from here is to formalize it a little bit and roll this up into an aggregation by product to have the computer spit out the work that we just did in our human heads to count up the largest one. So here's our first aggregation. That's, this is relatively straightforward. Anybody who did well on the first six questions of homework, of homework five could do this no problem. So we're gonna select the, whoops. Pardon me, we're going to select the prod ID because that's what we want to see, which prod is the one that sells most often. And also we want to count the rows associated with each product ID because that's what we're interested in seeing a count. That's going to come from order items, just like the first query that was not an aggregation. And we are going to group by product ID because that's what we want to see. We want to see the counts per or by product ID. And so we have that. And there you go. We confirm that TNT2 and FB are the only ones that have sold more than once. Apparently our business isn't doing terribly well. Now let's extend this simply by sorting, sorting it in descending order. So order, well, let me make that capital, order by 
count asterisk descending. Okay, and now we get the top two first. So what we want to do here in our first bit of trickiness is to limit the output simply to the result that is the highest number of order times. So basically we want to trim this down so it just says two. And we can do that by adding a wrinkle. I'm going to clear the screen here by adding a little built-in function that you may have seen in your experiences with SQL thus far. Uh, especially if you've been using PHP MyAdmin, we're simply going to limit with the limit function to one output. And that will give us just the top result. Since we've ordered in descending limit one, that will give us what we're looking for, the top result. We don't need product ID anymore, so let's get rid of that. And then we have this query here that just gives us the biggest number, which is exactly what we need to incorporate into a larger query. Let's take a look at building the larger query. So the larger query's job is basically to spit out all the products that meet the criteria of having a count of two. And again, using the amazing power of a human brain, we can go up to this and say, we know that just with an eyeball. It's gonna be TNT2 and, and FB. They're both, they both have two, so there is a two-way tie. And if there were three or four or five, we'd be able to see it at a glance. But if there's thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, tens of millions, that becomes much more difficult. So we need to build something that will do that automatically without using the computing power of our own brains. So we're going to make this query an, an, a nested query and then use its results to do some other filtering. So we don't want the count, we want to see the products. So let's ask for the products. So we ask for product ID and product ID from order items. Okay. Group by, because we want a count by product ID, prod ID. And here's probably the biggest tricky part. We want the product IDs whose counts are equal to this inner statement that we developed in the previous step. We know that this is gonna be evaluate to two and we want the product IDs whose count evaluate to two. Whether that's one, whether that's two, whether that's 72, we want as many as there are. And so we can use our having clause since we've already done our group by having count asterisk equal to the count asterisk that results in here. And then this will give us a list of those product IDs. And we already know what they are, right? They're FB and TNT2. But this moves us one step closer to our goal. And this is where we overcome that challenge that the possibility of ties presents for us. Okay. Okay, I just uh, cleared the screen and, and re-entered our last query. So now let's move on to focus on the question. The question doesn't ask about products, it asks about vendors, a vendor or vendor. So let's add that to the mix, right? So we can leave product ID in there for the time being. Eventually we'll want to take it out, but let's just make sure everything is tracking well. And let's say, at least to start, we'll identify the vendors by their vendor ID rather than their name, because that will make our life a little bit easier because it only requires a single join. Now, unfortunately, order items, while it has the product ID, it doesn't have the vendor ID. So we need to turn to another table for that. And you would think the obvious place would be vendor, but we can actually get away with products and save ourselves one join because products has a foreign key of vendor ID. So let's do that to make our lives a little bit easier. Now we will need a where clause to take care of that join. And we want the foreign key uh, value to equal in the table where it's foreign key, the primary key value in the primary key table. And so order items and products um, are are going to share a product ID. So we got where order items dot prod ID is equal to products 
dot prod ID and that will give us our join but now we've got to go back to our select clause and deal with the fact that product ID here this this attribute here is no longer unambiguous because it could have come from products or it could have come from order items so let's specify that it's order items dot prod ID that makes it unique if you decide to go the other way it wouldn't make any difference but okay so now we've identified which vendor ID is associated with each of these two products and we also learned since these are both 1003 that there is no tie according to vendor ID because vendor 1003 which you recall starting with homework one is Acme Corporation sells both of the best selling products it sells TNT2 and it sells FB uh, but there could easily have been a tie per vendor as well. So we're still on the right track here. Now let's add one additional whistle and or bell. Let's say, you know, vend ID is good, but really in the real world, decision makers are going to want to have to deal with ID numbers. They're going to want the vendor name. So let's add vendor name as well. And to do that, unfortunately, requires us to add an additional table to our from clause because vendor name is only found in the vendors table. So we have to add vendors to our from clause, which as you probably have figured out by now, means we need an additional join condition. What's shared between vendors and products, the vend ID. So we say products.vend ID is equal to vendors.vend ID and we are in business for that. However, now we've got another situation where we have an ambiguous attribute name in our select clause because vend ID can come from products as a foreign key or from vendors as a primary key. So we need to uniquely identify it, which we do by prepending vendors. If we'd gone with products, it wouldn't change anything. And now we have added not just the vendor ID, but also the corresponding vendor name, which is exciting progress. Now it's time to turn again back to the question and saying the question doesn't ask about products and it doesn't, it doesn't ask um, for that information. So let's take it out and let's tidy things up as well. So first let's take out product ID. Right here. Right. All right, so we've taken out product ID. Now it's made prod ID in our group by statement ambiguous, which is not a problem. We can just simply prepend products dot prod ID. All right, there we go. Now all we did was take out the product ID. And when there, so the reason we're seeing Acme twice here is because it has two of the top two best-selling products. It sells both of the best sellers, but we don't need it listed twice just because it shows up twice. So let's add a select distinct here as well so that we can eliminate that redundancy. You know, we will take out records that are exactly the same. And then we have our answer, which is that the Acme Corporation vendor 1003 unambiguously sells the products, because it is a tie, that sell most frequently in our database. And this was you know, a long way to go to get there. And there's some interesting uh, sort of kludgy workarounds, including limiting the output of the inner query to the single highest number by doing order by descending and limit one. That's kind of funkified. The idea of doing, you know, of absolutely needing a nested select statement and then filtering on having count, that's a little tricky as well. And then dealing with all of the joins that are necessary to output the vendor name. But, you know, it's nothing with the possible exception of using the limit function that you haven't seen together, that you haven't seen before. And if you attack this step by step using the tools that you already have in your toolkit, you can pull this, pull this together. Although I'll be the first to admit it is not at all intuitive. And it sounds like such a simple question, 
which vendor or vendors sell the item that's ordered most often. And it is not in any way simple. But now, now you have an example. Hopefully you can build from this should your life ever involve writing SQL queries. And you know, if, if, if you've done well in the course up to this point, yeah, I, I'm happy to report that you, you should be well positioned for an entry level job writing SQL uh, or you know that involves SQL because a lot of non IT jobs you know especially with the the increase in data related jobs data analysts and whatnot in all segments of industry and not for profit financial and insurance and healthcare in all its its variations and pretty much every business so congratulations uh, good luck with the rest of your studies uh, uh, and uh, I, I, I hope to see you either on campus someday or uh, online in the interim. Take care.